Hi, I'm Diego Navarro. I'm a PhD student at the Stein Monogastric Nutrition Laboratory at University of Illinois. And today I'll be talking about the concentration of energy in processed soybean and raisin products fed to pigs. This is the general outline of my presentation for today. I'll start by giving a brief overview of some of the soybean and raisin products fed to pigs. And then I will discuss the materials and methods of this experiment and then dive into the results and the conclusions. Let's start with some of the soybean products. This is a simple illustration of how some of our soybean products are produced. We start with the raw soybeans. We remove the hull to get our dehulled full fat flakes which we can then subject to heat treatment to get full fat soybean meal or solvent oil extraction to remove the oil to get defatted flakes, which we then toast and grind to get our conventional soybean meal. Defatted flakes can also undergo low heat vacuum drying to get white flakes. We remove the soluble carbohydrates from the white flakes to get our traditional soy protein concentrate. So what is soybean meal? Soybean meal is a byproduct of the soybean oil industry, and it is widely used in swine diets mainly because of its excellent amino acid profile, which is high in lysine and tryptophan, which is why it complements the amino acid profile of corn. However, there are several anti-nutritional factors found in soybean meal. We have antigenic proteins such as trypsin inhibitors, lectins, glycinine, and beta-conglycinine. However, we usually see low levels of trypsin inhibitors and lectins in the final product because of the heat treatment used to produce soybean meal. We also have oligosaccharides that are stachyose, raffinose, and verbascose, as well as some phytic acid. These antigenic proteins trigger a transient hypersensitivity response in young pigs, which hinders the absorptive ability of the small intestine thus limiting the inclusion rate of soybean meal in diets fed to young pigs. However, it's been shown that these negative effects are reduced if soybean meal is replaced with fermented soybean meal or enzyme-treated soybean meal. Enzyme-treated soybean meal is soybean meal that undergoes a fermentation process and is then treated with an enzyme preparation and is subsequently heat-treated to inactivate its residual enzymes. The main goal of enzyme treatment is to reduce the levels of antigenic proteins, specifically beta-conglycinin, because this is more resistant to digestion. Because of the reduction of anti-nutritional factors, this results in an increased crude protein and amino acid concentration, which makes enzyme-treated soybean meal a suitable protein source in diets fed to young pigs. We also have what we call extruded soybean meal. Extrusion involves high heat and high pressure processes, which denatures proteins into smaller peptides and gelatinizes starch, which increases protein and starch digestibility in the resulting meal. And now let's move on to our rapeseed products. Zero Zero Rapeseed is the low erucic and low glucosinolate variety of our traditional rapeseed. In North America, this is also referred to as canola meal. Rapeseed meal also contains a desirable amino acid profile, which is high in our sulfur-containing amino acids. However, it also contains several anti-nutritional factors, which include glucosinolates, tannins, and cinnapine. And because the hull is not removed in the processing of rapeseed meal, it contains a high fiber concentration with up to three times more fiber than soybean meal. There are two main oil extraction procedures in the processing of rapeseed. Solvent extraction results in the conventional 00 rapeseed meal. The mechanical or expeller extraction results in 00 rapeseed expellers. These are the test ingredients that were used in this experiment. We had two sources of enzyme treated soybean meal, an extruded soybean meal that was subsequently fortified with an enzyme treatment, a source of soy protein concentrate conventional soybean meal, conventional 00 rapeseed expellers, and a fermented co-product mixture containing fermented rapeseed meal, wheat, soy molasses, and potato peel. 
Now, this product came to be because if fermentation increases the quality of soybean meal, then maybe fermentation of rapeseed meal with other components may also increase its digestibility. These ingredients are commercially available in Denmark with the first source of enzyme-treated soybean meal, also marketed here in the U.S. For the nutrient composition of the test ingredients on a dry matter basis, we have the test ingredients in the columns for the crude protein. We observed an increased crude protein concentration in the processed soybean products compared to the conventional soybean meal. We also observe a similar concentration of crude protein between the rapeseed expellers and the fermented co-product mixture, but both had less crude protein compared to the soybean products. There was a similar concentration of acid hydrolyzed ether extract between the soybean products, and we observed the highest fat content in the rapeseed expellers due to the processing of this product. We also expected a high concentration of NDF in the rapeseed products because the hull is not removed in the processing of rapeseed expellers and because of the other fibrous components that were added in the fermentation co-product mixture. However, it was surprising to see a high concentration of NDF in the soy protein concentrate, which suggests that soy hulls may have been added back to this ingredient, which makes it different from traditional sources of soy protein concentrate. Now for the gross energy on a kcal per kilogram dry matter basis, we also observed a numerically higher GE content in the processed soybean products compared to the conventional soybean meal. And we also expected the high GE content in the rapeseed expellers due to the high residual oil content. Now we look at the levels of sucrose in the soybean products. We have our soybean products on the x-axis and percent on the y-axis. The color of the bars representing each of the test ingredients will remain the same throughout the rest of the presentation. We observe a decrease in the concentration of sucrose in our processed soybean products, and this is mainly because of enzyme treatment. However, enzyme treatment was not as effective in fermenting sucrose in the second source of enzyme-treated soybean meal and the extruded soybean meal compared with the first source of enzyme-treated soybean meal. Similarly, looking at the levels of oligosaccharides, we observe a decreased concentration of stachios and raffinose in the first and second sources of enzyme-treated soybean meal. But again, enzyme treatment was not as effective in fermenting these oligosaccharides in the second source of enzyme-treated soybean meal compared with the first source of enzyme-treated soybean meal. So the objective of this experiment was to determine the concentrations of digestible and metabolizable energy in soybean products and zero-zero rapeseed co-products. For the materials and methods of this experiment, 64 barrels of initial body weight of about 20 kilograms were used and placed in metabolism cages. There was a five-day adaptation period followed by five days of fecal and urine collection. The experiment was set up as a randomized complete block design with eight treatments and eight replicates per treatment. This is the ingredient composition of the experimental diets. A diet containing 97% corn was used as the basal diet and an additional seven diets with corn plus each of the test ingredients partially replacing corn were formulated. The inclusion level of each of the test ingredients are not the same because these diets were formulated to be isonitrogenous. The difference procedure was used to calculate for DE and ME, and data were analyzed using the mixed procedure of SAS with diet as the fixed effect and group as the random effect. Moving on to the results of the experiment. For the apparent total tract digestibility or ATTD of gross energy, we observed that the conventional soybean meal had the greatest ATTD of GE, but was not different from corn. There were no differences in the ATTD of GE between the processed soybean products, but all of them were less than the conventional soybean meal. And this is mainly because of the disappearance of sucrose in the resulting meal. 
The ATTD of GE between rapeseed expellers and fermented co-product mixture were not different, but both were less than all of the soybean products. For the concentration of digestible energy on a kcal per kilogram dry matter basis, we observed that the second source of enzyme-treated soybean mu had less DE compared with the first source of enzyme-treated soybean mu, extruded soybean mu, and soy protein concentrate but was not different from the conventional soybean meal. There were no differences in the DE between rapeseed expellers and the fermented co-product mixture, but both had less DE compared with the soybean products. Similarly, for the concentration of metabolizable energy, we also observed that the second source of enzyme-treated soybean meal had the least concentration of ME between all of the soybean products. The difference between the concentration of ME between the first and second sources of enzyme-treated soybean meal may be due to the differences in the processing of these products or variability in the sources of soybean meal. We also observed that the concentration of ME was not different between the first source of enzyme-treated soybean meal and the soy protein concentrate, and this indicates that enzyme treatment does not decrease the concentration of ME even with the removal of sucrose and oligosaccharides in the resulting meal. We also observe a higher concentration of ME in the conventional soybean meal compared with corn, and this has been observed in several experiments conducted at the University of Illinois, and this suggests that book values for energy in conventional soybean meal may be underestimated. There are no differences in the concentration of ME in rapeseed expellers and fermented co-product mixture, but both were less than the soybean products. In conclusion, the concentrations of digestible and metabolizable energy were different among processed soybean products, and the process used to produce the second source of enzyme-treated soybean meal was less efficient in maintaining the concentration of energy compared with the first source of enzyme-treated soybean meal. And lastly, the concentration of digestible and metabolizable energy in the soybean products were greater than in the 0-0 rapeseed expellers and the fermented co-product mixture. With that, I would like to acknowledge the Danish Pig Research Center for funding this research project. And if you would like to know more about swine nutrition, you can visit our website at nutrition.ansi.illinois.edu. Thank you for your attention.